If you're going out this autumn to take photos, or you've already gone out to take photos of those vibrant colors, I wanna go over a few tools to bring those photos to life. Now I'm hoping your cameras are all set to RAW. This is gonna give you guys the most detail for what we're about to go over. And if you have already shot, or after you shoot and you upload your photos, you might notice that they're quite dull. So that's why we're gonna take our RAW photo from this and turn it into something that looks like this. So I'm gonna give you guys the four things that I do to my photos to make them pop and make those vibrant colors even more vibrant on these photos. So how do we do that? The first thing that we're gonna do is start off with a curves adjustment layer. So here in Lightroom, I've already made my slight adjustments. I usually just bring my highlights all the way down and bring my shadows all the way up. I don't really play with the whites or the blacks. Sometimes I do, but very rarely I will touch them. And I do not touch texture, I do not touch clarity, and we will actually end up playing with the dehaze, but we're gonna come back to this one last. Now, vibrance and saturation, if you feel like your photo needs it, you can use them, but what I'm gonna show you guys, there are a lot better tools within Lightroom that I think will get you guys much better photos and be able to control your colors a lot better. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is play around with a tone curve. I generally like to go for a moodier look, and the way that you can achieve that is by adjusting certain points on the tone curve. You have this grid right here, broken down into four different sections, and on this point, you have your absolute blacks, so if you bring it all the way up to your, the absolute highlights or whites, or you can drag it all the way down to for extreme blacks, turning everything that's black or has black pixels in it 100% black. And then same thing with 100% white. If you bring it over, it'll turn all the pixels 100% white. If you bring it down, it'll turn all those pixels 100% black. Then you have your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So what we wanna do is put a point right here and a point right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring my blacks up a little bit because we don't see things necessarily in 100% black. So I like to bring them up anywhere between 15 and 20. And then I like to bring my whites and flatten them out a little bit, somewhere be around 220 to 200, eh, maybe like 205. Sometimes I do put it at 200 if it really needs it. For this one, we have nice diffuse lighting, so I'm gonna go 220. And then I'm gonna pop my highlight and midtone point up. So you can see it's right on the cusp of the highlights and the midtone. And then I'm gonna take my shadows and midtones. I'm gonna bring them down, creating some more contrast, but not too much. You can see there's already a lot going on, but just for you guys to be able to see it a little bit more on your screens, I'm gonna dramatize it a little bit more than I normally would. So we'll bring those up a little bit more and we'll bring our shadow point down a little bit more. And now if we turn that off, we can really see what a difference just that little amount makes. This is what the original image looked like. Just playing with the tone curve makes such an impactful difference. This is one of the most utilized tools when it comes to photo editing. And when I do a lot of my post-processing in Photoshop, there's usually quite a few layers of curves. I do all my dodging and burning with curves adjustment layers. And if you don't know what dodging and burning is, well, I have a few tutorials on this page and I'll put them up here so you can understand that. But let's move on to the next thing. So I'm gonna scroll past the HLS and I'm gonna go straight to color grading. For a fall moody photo like this, I'm gonna click the shadows and I like to put them around 220. The 200 range is gonna be this tealish, bluish. So anywhere, if you want it to be 200, 190, well, 190 or up to 245, these are all gonna be your greenish blues, deep blues, bluish purples. I usually like to do 220. And then we can see if we drag that all the way to 100, we're obviously not gonna put it at 100, but I want you to be able to see what it does to the photo. Everything within the blacks, shadows, and lower end of the midtones is gonna turn blue, but we just want it to be very subtle. So with that in mind, I'm gonna put it to 20. Next, we're gonna click on the highlights. We can see at zero, we're in this red. At about 30, we're in the yellowish orange. And then at about 45 to 50, we're gonna be in the yellows to yellow greens. And the sun doesn't naturally make yellow green. So I like to keep mine at simply 30. And then for this, 
I'll put it at 10. Luminance is gonna be how bright and dark it is. Blending is pretty self-explanatory. The more blended, the more blending the color grading is gonna be. And balance is gonna be how warm or how cool based off of where you put it. And I might even, instead of adjusting my temperature, drop this about to negative 60 for more cooler colors. Now in the HSL. Now you can have it set up so that you can see the hue, saturation, and luminance on different planes. I like to click the color option so that I have the hue, saturation, luminance of each individual color stacked and go through them one by one. Really, it's a personal preference and whatever you choose is just a matter of how you like to go through your photo and how you break things down. For me, this is so much easier as I can go through things one by one. And I usually will change the hue slider because I feel like you can see the individual color that you're working on a lot easier than just bringing up the saturation. You can see it still shows, but look how much more it shows on this whole entire side opposed to this side when we adjust the hue. And if you have a photo that has a decent histogram, this one, you can see the colors throughout it are pretty much even. So you could even take the luminance, bring up the luminance and darken it and see where the lighting is gonna change on those images. A quick breakdown of hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is gonna be the true exact color that it is set to or that you adjust it to. Where saturation is the pureness of the color, how vivid and how pure that singular color is gonna be. And the luminance is how either bright or dark that color is. And because a lot of these colors are kind of competing with one another, especially in this left sector here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the reds a little bit away from the oranges, and then I'll pop the saturation up to about 25 and a negative 75 for hue. And then I might even bring up the luminance a little bit, making them stand out a little bit more because reds are generally darker. Now, when it comes to the oranges, we're gonna do the same thing. We can see there is a lot of orange in this photo. So we don't want our oranges to be competing with the other reds and we don't want them to be, well, a yellowish green. So we might even just pop them a little bit away from the center, maybe plus five. And then if we bring our saturation all the way up, it's a little extreme. So obviously we're not gonna do a hundred, but what I would say is acceptable is something around 30. Now I don't wanna brighten these up because it's gonna be way too extreme, but normally if you wanna just throw it to 100, gradually bring it down and see where you like it. I think plus 12 works out quite nice. Moving on to yellows. Obviously our main trees in the center here are gonna be yellow and we don't want any green in them and we don't want to turn them orange because then the color composition is gonna be competing with one another. So we want them as yellow as possible. So I might bring them again a little bit to the to the right of center, bring the saturation to 100, work my way down. We'll actually do about 10, and then I'm gonna actually brighten these up to about 50. Yeah, 45 looks good too. I like to make my greens a little bit on the teal side and then desaturate them to about negative 60 or so and brighten them up as well, just because they add a little bit more separation between all the other colors if you have some green in your photos. Now, when it comes to aquas, we don't have a whole lot of aqua, so I'm not even gonna play around with it. We don't have a whole lot of blues either, but I am gonna bring them down just a little bit for noise purposes. Purples, not a whole lot of purples, so we're gonna bring that down to negative 100. Now there are some magentas in here, but they're not very prominent, and I'd rather just have them a little bit more desaturated. Now the last thing I wanna go over with you guys is an incredibly powerful tool. These sliders, I don't think, are used as often as they should, and they're powerful because they control luminance, saturation and vibrance and color well and also hue they do a whole lot for just a couple sliders so let me show you what i mean you have a red primary a green primary and a blue primary each one of these will affect all of the colors in the image but what it's focusing on is red pixels green pixels and blue pixels mixed in with everything else so completely altering it also on those hues which is why we have hue and saturation and one of the cool things is if we bring up the saturation we can almost see the luminance of those colors increasing as well not just the saturation so how do i choose which one to change which one to increase saturation decrease saturation 
Well, I usually like to go by a two by one ratio where I increase saturation on the two most prominent colors in the photo and I will desaturate the other one. Let's take a look. Obviously we have reds and we have oranges. So first thing I like to do is bring my hue slider all the way to the right or left. There we are on the left. So way too purpley and magenta, way too yellow and way too green. And I really don't want either of these colors. I probably will put it at about a plus 10 for hue because our main subject is these trees. I care more about these trees drawing your attention than what I do about anything going on over here. I mostly just want color separation going on over here, guiding you here. And then as far as saturation goes, we'll bring that all the way to 100 and we'll work our way back. And I think around 20 looks pretty good. Greens, we don't have a whole lot of greens, but we have a heck of a lot more greens than blue. That's why up here, we pretty much left the blues alone. One of the cool things is, is if we drag our hue slider all the way to the left, we can see it changes a lot of the photo. And we drag it to the right, it turns everything green. So this is something I really don't want either of these main colors in my photo. So I'm gonna use this to desaturate the image around negative 30. And then let's take a look at green primary. We have, again, those yellows popping, bringing more oranges into the photo. So I'm gonna go to the left, maybe negative 11, and then we'll bring this up to maybe plus 25. Now there's one last thing that we need to do before we're completely done, and that's what I glazed over in the beginning, which is dehaze. So scrolling up to the top, let's see if we can get rid of some of this haze and introduce more contrast. About seven looks pretty good, and I'm actually gonna increase the highlights to about negative 70. Now that we've done everything that we've needed to do, let's take a look at the before and after. You can see an incredibly drastic change, especially on this right-hand side where the yellows are just popping out. And this is really what, when I took this photo, I wanted you guys to be able to see. I wanted these to stand out from the rest. I wanted your attention to be drawn right here and then move your way through the photo and look at all the colors all the way down to the reflections. Now there's still a lot that could be done in this photo and this is where I would just stop in Lightroom and I would actually go and alter it even more with dodging and burning in Photoshop. And if you wanna learn how to make your photos pop more and you have Photoshop, go ahead and watch this video next.